Caroline. Where do I put this? Anywhere you want. Just set it down on the floor. Good job, honey. Caroline, you want to come put them out? Well, we gotta put feet in oh. first. Oh. Oh no, I like the big ones. Mommy, can I use one? Okay. Gentle with them, dear. Hey, you're not being gentle. No, I have to do it up there. Stop and look at mama after you get your chicken. Look at mama. Look at mama before you put the chicken. Look at this is easy. Caroline, why are you such a helper? It's like it's like. Oh, sorry. Now look how big this one is. Mm -hmm. Look at its wings too. Mm -hmm. They can fly. So I, uh, or I, we, we failed to share this whole journey with you guys, but we decided to hatch out some chicks. We have our incubator from years ago. If you guys go back and watch, uh, we hatched out ducks years ago, and then we were looking at buying chicks for this spring, and we finally decided we might as well hatch our own. We knew we could buy straight runs, whatever, but we figured with the kids and everything, we'd hatch our own. So we started, we bought, um, 11 eggs from one lady and she said they were nine Americanas and two cream leg bars uh, out of those 11 uh, one cream leg bar egg and one Americana egg didn't hatch so we got nine chicks out of the 11 and they look all sorts of different colors the one cream leg bar does uh, which you guys can't see under the red light anyway but the one cream leg bar is noticeable when you see it amongst the other ones but a lot of the Supposed Americana chicks are very yellow and fluffy and only one or two of them actually look like Americana chicks uh, But then a week later stop honey. a week later. We added another uh, 22 eggs That were supposed to be all we were told all Rhode Island red eggs and Same thing a bunch of them had out, you know yellow and red and all sorts of different colors uh, And there's one little black one. I think I can get the camera to focus and the light to change well, maybe not. There's one little black and white one right there about the center of the screen. Nope, just kidding. Does oh, that help? It helps a ton. There's a little black and white one. Nah, he buried. Anyway, there's one little black and white one. Super cute. Um, Turn it back on. And the lady told me what it was. Now I can't remember. A Sussex, I think. Black Sussex. Anyway, we don't really care. We're not picky on the breed. Uh, we just wanted to hatch out chicks and start this whole process on getting some chickens. Uh, you know to have our own eggs. So it's been a couple years. We've done it before, but we're gonna go through it again But what I wanted to share with you guys too was how we how we're getting dual use out of our barn again So you guys have watched the goat videos if You're familiar with this whole little barn that we put up and lean to outside, but what we did instead of building a Custom brooder you gonna plug that back in maybe they'll quiet down a little bit What we did instead of building like a custom plywood box <laughs> brooder like some people would do is we just built this framework on top, put chicken wire across it, and then we put wooden blocks. Maybe you can see in the back there. You can see that two by two, uh, and you can see one back there. There's another one you can see just kind of right underneath the edge here. But we just put a wooden blocks around the edge and just nailed them up to make a rim board, basically, and then just set this whole framework right on top. So there's nothing holding it there except its own weight. Um, and then we're actually able to pick it up. We can hinge, We can just lift up on the front. And bring the whole thing all the way up we hinge it up and we can tie it off to that clip so we can open the lid basically to get in there if we need to actually get in further so we're not in there on our hands and knees cleaning it out so it actually worked really well we took chicken wire then and we nailed to this post and we stretched chicken wire across the gate and then here we basically nailed in a door jam um, just to block it all off so the gate actually sits low enough to the floor the lid lines up perfectly with this crossbar on the gate I mean it's enough the chick can't jump out the cat can't jump in and that was really our only concern was our barn cat. I mean, varmints may or may not find their way in here eventually, but 
We just jump on our barn cap to get a little too curious <coughs> and try to help himself to a few chicks. So I just want to show you guys that kind of as an option. Um, I think I've explained when I've been milking the goats, not chicken related, but we run all the, the milk goats now into this stall when we milk, so it's a lot faster. We run all the does in here, get their babies back out, uh, and then I can, you know, just grab a goat, one, grab a goat on the stand, grab a goat on the stand. I'm not having to run out into the alleyway and catch it one goat at a time. So we still reserve space for the dairy goats in the second stall. We're going to use this stall for the chicks, um, for their brooder for now, until they get big enough to go out into an actual coop. Now for the coop, and not to get too far ahead, but for the coop, what we're planning is to build a similar sort of style like this, just a real lightweight framework, kind of like a rabbit hutch. Uh, and we're actually trying to figure out a way to hang it on the wall somewhere out here in the alleyway. What? Oh, I thought they were going out there next to the connex. Well, whatever. We're gonna build a chicken coop somewhere. <laughs> um, I wanted to put them in here in the under the lean-to just so the rain's off them so I don't have to build a whole dedicated structure, but. We're gonna build a chicken coop somewhere for them and we wanna put the coop inside the goat pen because then the chickens will be able to run around anywhere they want inside of the goat pen and not have those three numb nuts try to eat them. Really, really what inspired the whole chicken project, to be honest with you guys, was this pile of uh, bedding and manure because it is an absolute fly breeding ground and there's really nothing we can do about it. We pile it up here a little bit at a time and then eventually once the pile gets too big we get the tractor we move it all out there to the garden to the main compost pile but we don't move it all like that every single time it's just it's too much effort to <laughs> set up with the tractor <laughs> so back on the chickens we're going to build a little like i said a rabbit hutch style coop for them um just enough to lock them up in at night it will have the nest boxes in it um and like i said just a way that we can just close the door at night lock them in uh, and they'll have a roost in there, but otherwise we expect them to be out running around all the time. Um, we're not gonna build them a great big chicken house that we keep them in all the time. We want them to get out and around. And we know that we take our chances with that, obviously, that varmints might pick them off. And if they do, we'll deal with that when it comes. Um, any of them that are cockerels, we're gonna pick them off ourselves. So you know what, that's the way it goes. Uh, and yeah, if we do have varmints picking off too many, we'll just hatch out more eggs. That's kind of our plan. So. Just wanted to share that with you guys, like I said, because we didn't talk about any of it along the way, and I don't know why we should have. We should have been excited, and I promise you we were very excited. Um, I guess I just didn't think about it. Maybe for once I spent more time with the kids on it than I did sharing it with you folks. Anyway, simple idea. If you guys have a little barn like this, you're not sure what to do. It worked out really well for us because the barn stalls have the solid walls. Um, but we don't want to use this barn in here um, for our chicken coop we just don't want this space we use this space very much for our you know for our milking area and our feed storage and we don't want it to be a filthy <coughs> chicken coop too so it's going to be just the brooder area um we just moved the chicks out here they hatched um the bigger ones i guess are about oh uh, about 10 11 days old uh and the smaller ones are just a few days old they're a week apart um but anyway, uh, we just moved them out here today. Prior to this, we had them in a cooler, a big igloo cooler out in the shop with a heat lamp on that um, for their initial little space just to stay warm and have a little pen for them. That actually worked pretty good too, but they were getting pretty crowded. So uh, yeah, moved them into here. This gets us several weeks, really, um, if not months. We'll just kind of have to see how quick they grow, but it gives me plenty of time to get their coop built and figure out how i want to do with it so maybe i'll bring you guys along on that journey but for today i just wanted to show you the setup process and show you how we built this impromptu sort of temporary brooder